What's going on guys, the and him beat Dan. I'm back with more Sucker for Love, first date. Last time, we went on our titular first date with Lynetta, our Cthulhu stand-in, thick girl who destroyed all reality, but hey, we got a kiss. Now we move on to chapter two, and things are going to start to get a little bit more complicated. Also, we need two more secrets. Spoilers, they're in here. Chapter 2. The King in Yellow Approaches. Boy, I, uh, wonder which elder eldritch god this is supposed to be. I can't remember what the story of the King in Yellow was, but I've definitely heard of it. In a world terrorized by slavering shadows and tentacled nightmares, something as innocuous as an additional star in the night sky may be the most prophetic premonition of doom. For wherever the lurid golden light of the planet Carcosa shines, the long, wicked shadow of the king in yellow is cast. Behind that mask lie echoes of decadence and disorder, masquerades of limitless cruelty and hideous laughter in equal part. And of all the poor devils seduced by the lavish promises of the God King's Court, the flavored victims of the King's sadistic amusement are followers belonging to other deities. Huh? What? Where? Huh? Did I zone out? I was... What was I doing? Damn, I'm having one hell of a brain fart. I can't remember for the life of me what I was supposed to be doing. Everything feels so hazy. Was I going to work? I am standing outside after all. Yeah, that's gotta be it. The sun is setting, so it's probably around 7pm, which means I'm gonna be crazy late. Fantastic. That's the beauty of working nights. I can't use the excuse that I overslept. Yeah, boss, I slept all day. Sun up to sun down. That's why I'm... Six hours early for my shift? Huh. Those sound like the church's noontime bells. It's high noon? It's high noon. No way. They must be doing some special event service or something. I can clearly see that it's the golden hour right before sunset. I'll just have to ask someone for the time on my way to work. If it's not too late and I really hoof it, I'll just get chewed out instead of fired. I'll still have to deal with being sweaty, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Oh, someone's coming home. Perfect. Fingers crossed that I'm not absolutely screwed. Hey, man, sorry to bother you. You wouldn't happen to have the time on you, would you? Why do you look like you would be at home inside of a JRPG about thieves? Weird. Hello? Hey, uh... Hey. Is this guy ignoring me? Normally I'd say whatever and walk away, but he's unfortunately standing in the only stairway off this floor. Which is weird, because it looks like there's a wall behind him, but whatever. The only way to exit this conversation is to shove past him. This guy is giving me such weird vibes, I don't want to go anywhere near him. The longer I look at him, this guy seems more and more suspicious. That odd posture. He's slowly swaying in an uncanny, disturbing way. The collar of his shirt looks filthy, stained with splotched of deep browns and reds. Is he bleeding? Does he even live here? This is the top floor, and I thought I've met all my neighbors. There are only four apartments up here. My only choices are to go inside and call the police. God. Mm. Call the police, or to walk past this freaky guy. I don't have the time to wait around for when the cops show up, so I'll... Just as I take a step, I kick something weighty with my shoe. It's bright pink with gold accents. A book? What's... Lynetta. But I died! The world ended! Yeah, about that. 
The shock freezes me in place, and because I was so distracted, I didn't even notice the... I duck inside my room, slamming the door in the suspicious man men's face. Fumbling with the locks in a panic, I manage to turn the deadbolt. I take a few fearful steps back into the room, clutching the book to my breathing ch beating chest. I died. I definitely died when I performed the final ritual, so why am I still here? Where is here? Huh. I don't remember that poster. I don't remember that mask. Locked in my room, I have nowhere to run. Lynetta! Lynetta! If Lynetta was here, she could explain this. Maybe there's something in this book that can save me. I need to hurry. Come on, come on, Lynetta, where are you? Lynetta, who? Huh? Who is this Lynetta you're trying to call? Mitzi? W what are you doing in my room? I just so happened to overhear you saying, Lynetta, where are you? You sounded like you were in trouble, so I let myself in. H How did you even get in here? Your window is open. Huh? No, it's not. And either way, I'm on the top floor, so how did you... Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? What is her deal? I knew she'd be pissed I slammed that door in her face, but not so much that she wouldn't notice any of the things obviously wrong here. Why doesn't she care about those freaky things stalking me outside, or that my room is full of evil idols and ritualistic tokens? I can explain all this stuff. Let me guess. Accursed devices used to channel eldritch magics and do the bidding of outer gods. Well, yeah, uh, exactly right. Did you just randomly guess that? No, I've just been playing coy. I know exactly what you've been doing. You know what this is, don't you? It's a golden version of my book. The book I used to perform rituals for Lynetta. Hers looks way more ornate than mine. Considering I ended reality with mine, I can't imagine how dangerous hers must be. Oh my god, are these just like death notes? That would be hilarious. Wait a minute. The sky? That suspicious man outside? They all match Missy's book. Is she making all this happen? Oh god. When I expected her to do something crazy, I thought she was just gonna show up with a hatchet or something. Missy, look, I'm sorry, I just gotta go I just got wrapped up in something. Please don't Sorry? You're sorry? Why are you acting so afraid of me? <laughs> Could it be that you know what this book is capable of? I already hate her for that laugh alone. I know all too well, but I also know that these incantations take at least five seconds to pronounce. And that's if she gets it right on the first try. So worst case, I have five seconds to stop her. If I dash for my ritual knife behind her, I might be able to kill her before she does something terrible to me. If I can distract her, I might be able to buy myself more time. Missy, look, I'll do whatever you want. Anything? I can be rather... demanding. Name your price. So bold. In that case, I have three commands. Number one, you'll address me as Your Highness from now on. So when I come home, it's welcome home, Your Highness. When she comes home, she wants to move in? But that means... Whatever, it's not like I'm going to have to actually follow through on these. At least one of us is about to die. As you wish, Your Highness. What else? Number two... You'll quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me, your one and only. Sure, whatever. Just a little bit more until I'm in sprinting range with the knife. And number three. You'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Do you agree to my terms? Absolutely. Absolutely what? Absolutely your highness. If you will do whatever I ask, then there's no need to use 
cast any of these dreadful spells on you. As a matter of fact, I believe you can help me with them. Here. She just handed over her book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulses and crackles from my fingertips. She... Is she not here to hurt me? Oh, confused. I've liked you for a long time. And you're a capable bookkeeper. Handsome to boot. There's no reason we can't simply work together. After all, a relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good, right? R right. We narrowly escaped with our lives just now. But something is bothering me. How does she remember that I stood her up in the reality that ended under Lynetta's awakening? And how did she get in through my window? I doubt she was able to climb several stories dressed like that and then pass through my locked window without breaking it. There's only one possible answer. All right, your highness. I'm ready to enter my lifetime of servitude to you. I just have one small request first. Being? The ultimate test. Could you tell me what this is? Huh? Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? So, you're an eldritch god disguised as a human. What? How did you figure that out so suddenly? I like that her eye patch switched, uh, switched sides. Isn't it obvious? No human being can pronounce Worsh... Worsh... Where... I... I love the ironic joke that you can't not pronounce uh, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire... Wor Secretly, this is just playing the long con. <laughs> Worcestershire. Of course not, it's an eldritch alone word. Why else would it be spelled like that? Pretty sure it's German. Pretty sure that's why. <sighs> I was careless. After all this time, I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. Yeah, you should have tried using your Eldritch form instead. I would have fallen in love immediately. What? What? You think cosmic entities are attractive? As a human? What can I say? I'm a sick fuck. 3D women are fine, but fourth dimensional girls with non elucidian geometry are smoking. They've got curbs I can literally get lost in. <laughs> if I had known that you're attracted to my cosmic godhood, I would have just led with that. Yeah, not usually something that comes up in conversation often. <clears throat> Allow me to properly introduce myself. I am Esther, King in Yellow, heiress to Carcosa. Talent, I'm sure. I'm sure. You look the most normal out of the cosmic entities I've seen, but I also can't remember the story of the king in yellow. I think it had to do with someone going crazy and seeing a bunch of stuff, but it's never actually known if he's actually seeing monsters and demons or if he's just going crazy. She's gorgeous, a bona fide Eldritch King in my room. Oh man, all my fantasies of smooching an Eldritch horror are coming true. An Eldritch royalty to boot. The King in Yellow. Sounds familiar, can't remember why. My memory of my other existence is kind of fuzzy. What I do remember is that her followers tend to be incredibly violent towards cultists loyal to other gods. Like Lynetta. Shit. I got swept up in the moment and almost forgot I already pledged fealty to a different god. This reality or not. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm already involved with another god. I'm following Lynetta. I know, so loyal, so faithful and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. In exchange for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Well, power. Whatever that rotten witch Lynetta offered you, I can double it. She promised me a smooch. And I shall... What, what, what? I love this image. It looks so funny. 
You handed over your reality to her? For a singular smooch? Are you mad? You heard me. So you'll match her offer then? I... I su suppose... If that's all you're selling the world for, then a smooch can be... Uh, arranged. No way. You promised to double it. That's two smooches. Now hold on a minute. Two of them. On the lips. You have those. Which is different than Lynetta, I think. Alright, alright. Very well. Two smooches lip to lips. Satisfied? Maybe. I just... Usually, my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame, and influence, or some lavish indulgence. N nobody's ever dared to ask to kiss me before, so... She's blushing for real. You really want to smooch me? Well, <clears throat> your terms are amenable. Suffice it to say, I'll expect you to perform your scenes flawlessly in exchange. Scenes? The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the King in Yellow. Huh? You mean the spell book that I was so afraid of? It's just a damn play? This thing is just a playbook? Where are all the power-invoking rituals? Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? No, we aren't barbaric swamp folk casting Hocus Pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed. Perfectly. Perfectly. I don't always get these rituals, or, I mean, scenes, right the first time. What happens if I botch my lines or get a scene wrong? Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosan Times publication. And you'll also be killed. Oh. Shit, not sure how I'll ever live past my uh, reputation being dragged through the mud by the Carcosan Times. Death is also kind of a problem. I'm very allergic to that. I'm getting those smooches no matter what. Break a leg, dearest. Shiny. Also because I forgot to talk to Lynetta last time. Let's talk to her now. Hey, Esther. Don't do that. What? All I did was say hello. Don't speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. A mortal saying Esther summons me to them. If I can't say your name, what am I supposed to call you? You have many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. <laughs> you could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. Esther, Esther, Esther. Stop that! Well, that was entertaining. All right, book. The King in Yellow. Scribbles, 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 scribbles. Moon face. Uh, I can talk to her again? Is it just the same thing again, or...? What is it now? I was just thinking, you know, how saying your name summons you? Yes. What of it? There's an old myth that saying Bloody Mary in the mirror three times at midnight summons an angry demon in your, to your room. Really? I've never heard of such a ritual. Does it work? It summoned my neighbor telling me to shut the hell up and go to bed, so sort of. I can still talk to her. I'm not going to do that, though. I think I might piss her off. All right. Talk about that last page another time. Okay, so setting exterior in view of the city. Also, per what Esther said, don't fuck it up. Go slowly. 
going too fast will kill you. So. I'm not going to try making up words for this one just because I'm going to have to do enough speaking for these actual rituals that it's not going to matter. glad her entourage are here to creepily stare at me. Greetings, st stranger fortune fellow. Tis a party for which I bellow. I invite the king in yellow, so come all ye in ye till. Wear thine mask upon you to my masquerade until he may come to lost ye till. Hope for us there may be still. Shadows lengthen dim streets darken. To the curfew thou must hearken. Why so loudly dost thou bark in the dim city of ye till? Only much attention, quite unwholesome you'll instill from the souls of poor Yatil. Why attract so much ill will? I hate this rhyming scheme. It always throws me off at the end. So, also unlike Lynetta's rituals, uh, there are multiple parts to each of these. So my heart is beating, like, in the game, and I'm not sure if that's a sign I should hurry the fuck up or not. That is just what I must seek, see, hidden somewhere amongst the meekly. Tis one invitee I seek, he shall all my mistakes undo. Tis the king in yellow whose great wealth I shall accrue. When his shadow passes through, wealth will come to I and you. Surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king as whom they say, which shall this city indeed smite. If he comes, you tell him you and I will know his might. I'll be lost within a night. What reward is worth that price? I've also just realized it keeps saying king disguised, which is funny to me. well paced as I can for this. Don't want to fuck it up. Shit. Or at least too soon. I wonder how this works on Switch. So this game got released for Switch. I can't imagine doing this without a mouse. I want you to use the touch screen for it. Might be slightly better, if I'm to be honest. Wearing this expensive clothing, pardon from my family's loathing, lasting till I'm decomposing all my friends whom strife I've caused. Yes, preparing for this night, their forgiveness is the cause. They shall all be proud because I had brought the king to us. In scene. Bravo! Simply splendid. Why, thank you. It was actually pretty fun. I haven't gotten to flex my acting chops since high school. You're no stranger to the stage, I can tell. Yeah, I was a theater kid. My school did Macbeth. Virtuoso of the bard, are we? If you perform Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to survive my play. Tell me, what role were you? The leading man, I presume. I was tree number four. 
<laughs> I love, I love the idea that the main character, I think he's just called D. Because if you've noticed, like, Lynetta and Esther call him different things. Lynetta called him Darling. Esther calls him Dearest, and it's reflected in, like, the dialogue here. But I think his actual name is just D. Uh, but I love the idea that he's like, yeah, you know, I did theater in high school. I was pretty all right. I was, I was pretty on point. Yeah, I was a tree. It's not. You weren't even the leading tree. <laughs> Don't worry, I was actually Macbeth. I thought you said you were a tree. Acting. Ah, okay. Oh, you are good. Either that or you're not very bright. I'm not sure which it is. Whoa, hey, what's happening to you? Don't fret, dearest. Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. You know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. I can only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night when you're not standing in natural light, or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. That explains why Missy had a weird daytime curfew. She'd literally vanish when the sun sets. What a Cinderella-like curse. That also explains how she got in my room. My window may have been locked, but the curtains were open, allowing the light in. So she can't get into my room if I close my curtains? Aw, I was quite enjoying my time with you. I wanted to stay a little longer. Alas, parting is such sweet sorrow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Until then, I bid you adieu. Oh my. Well, looks like I have one hell of a choice to make. Lynetta hasn't been summoned yet, and Esther is stuck outside for the moment. So I have a moment to collect my thoughts. Between Lynetta and Esther, who do I want to smooch? Or maybe more accurately, who am I more afraid of? Do I stay with Lynetta, or do I follow Esther this time around? She is offering twice as many smooches, after all. I need to make my choice if I want to stay with Lynetta, then I should focus on casting spells from her book. If I want to smooch Esther, then I should open my window again when the clouds clear and use Esther's book. And if I try going for both, well, walking down the middle of the road is bound to get me run over. As long as they aren't both in the room at the same time, I should be safe. Right? Oh man, what am I going to do? Either way, I need to talk to Lynetta. She may be an avatar of world ending calamity, but she might be able to help me get my head straight. Speaking of my head, why does my forehead feel kind of sticky? I also love now also just to reflect the fact that the girls are color coded. I'm now dressed in yellow, as opposed to the pink that I was with, uh, Lynetta. Oh good, my hands are bleeding. Awesome. Alright, so, ensure all possible light has been snuffed. Yeah. We've played this game before. There we go, all light, red fire candles, ritual necklace, and all is complete. Descend upon me this dark night. My angel of calamity and tentacles. Oh shit, I didn't mean to actually skip over that. T Mortal, for what purpose have you? Darling, it's you! Hey, Lynetta. 
It's nice to see her despite everything I've been through so far. Sure, she may have ended the reality I was from, but she never lied or deceived me in any way. She told me up front what would happen, and I did it willingly. That said, I'm really glad you're here, but can you tell me what happened to me to the world that we dated in? That reality fell to me. Nothing there exists anymore. Like a dream that ends. Just as I thought. Only... Then why am I still here? Why did I survive when the rest of reality didn't? Oh, darling, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing. You're still here because I'm... Oh my god, she's pregnant. I'm still dreaming about you. Or that. You know, that works too. Everything in existence is being dreamed about by at least one Eldritch God. So as long as you're on my mind, you'll exist somewhere. That's actually kind of sweet in a terrifying cosmic way. What would happen if every God stopped dreaming at the same time? What if you woke up all at once? Everything, including all of the Gods, would cease to be. And that can just happen at any time? Nah, don't worry. There's about 50 of us total. So the chances of all of us being awake at the same time are low. There's only like 50 of you in all? She probably knows Esther very closely. Mm -hmm. Kind of a big family, huh? Family. Do, do you know Esther? Esther? Darling, I thought I told you not to mention other women while we're together. Especially not my sister. I'm sorry, what? Sister? Ugh, I can't stand that prissy little boyfriend stealing. Don't, uh, have a great relationship with her. Absolutely not. We've been fighting over planets and followers for eons. It wouldn't be a stretch to call us nemeses. Huh. Thanksgiving dinner must be awkward. Good thing I washed my face. Playboy instincts jumping out here. If Lynetta saw that lipstick smear on my forehead, I'd be in hot water right about now. Well, I still am in hot water now, actually. I've gotten involved with her sister. A messy affair is bad enough, but with a family member? I'm toast if she finds out. Esther. Looks like the clouds haven't cleared yet. I won't be able to see her right now if I wanted to. For now, I should work through Lynetta's spells again. Eldritch Hand saved my ass last time. It really didn't, come to think of it. I better cast that one in case uh, in case I'm unable to talk again. Sheesh, listen to myself. What the hell is wrong with me, man? Ah, the wonders of Eldritch Demons. Darling, what's this I found under your bed? Uh... Oh, that's my Eldritch Encyclopedia. I haven't translated it yet, but its diagrams are useful. Oh, you studied it extensively then. I sense I've made some sort of mistake. I uh, guess? Why? What's up? Darling, this is a dirty magazine. W what? Really? I thought it was an anatomical guidebook. Big Slippery Shogoth Girlfriends Volume 3? I bet you can learn a lot of anatomy from this. Perf. I said I haven't translated it yet. How was I supposed to know? This girl on the front isn't wearing anything. She's topless. That's a girl? It just looks like an am amorphous mass of tentacles to me. Is this what you wish I looked like? I really, truly don't. Trust me. Look, Lynetta, you're smoking hot. I could never have eyes for anyone else when I'm with you. You're my dream girl. I seriously didn't know it was a dirty mag. Honest. It's okay. I forgive you. That said, can I keep it? Not a chance. Well, I tried. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.